Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my how to make a featured content slider slash gallery slash lightbox slash whatever you want to say. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to finish up everything and I'm going to make this wonderful thing. And this is where I left you after I created all the HTML and the JavaScript in the last part of the tutorial. And like I said, in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to fix everything up. So let's jump into the code. All right, this is the final part. And of course you need the code a slider tool that I talked about in the previous tutorial. If you didn't see that, definitely watch it. And now all we have to do is style all the CSS so that everything looks beautiful. And as I change things on the right side of the screen, you're gonna see everything change on the left side of the screen. Okay, so as I'm going through the CSS code, I see this insignificant stuff for demo purposes. Well, what that means to me is delete it. Okay, so that's gone. And pretty much anytime you ever see anything insignificant, that pretty much means delete it. Then I'm just gonna walk our way through here and change things as we do. All right, code a slider wrapper. This wraps around everything. Well, I see no reason for there to be any padding at all that I personally don't want to create. So I'm getting rid of that. Also, I want to change the background color to just a plain black. Of course, you can change it to anything else that you would want to change it to. So I got that changed down. And then we scroll through, and there's really nice descriptions of exactly what the code does. So that's one of the reasons why I use the code slider as a basis for creating everything. Well, I know that my picture is 762 pixels wide. So down here, I'm going to define 762 pixels. And of course, this slider allows for auto sizing and so forth. But for this point, I'm not going to take advantage of that. But you, of course, could. And then 762 here. And then down here, this is the code of slider wrapper arrows and the slider itself. They're throwing a margin in there of 10 pixels. Well, again, I don't want any of those margins, so I'm just going to get rid of them. And then we come down to arrow styling, which is these guys down here. If you can't see this, you can watch this full screen. I'm going to come in here and make a couple little changes here and there. Mainly, once again, that I'm going to set the path adding to zero and I'm also going to change the width to zero and then we keep on scrolling down here and I'm basically as you can see I'm just getting rid of all these extra extraneous paddings that I don't feel that I need and then we scroll down to this part where it says don't change anything below unless you know what you're doing well I'm not certain that I know what I'm doing but I know I do not like this part right here where it says clear both what this does is it eliminates the ability to put objects next to the slider well I of course want that capability. So if I want to put additional divs on the left or the right, I want that capability. So I'm going to put none in there. So I guess I know what I'm doing. And then down here where it's doing the same exact thing, I'm also going to come in here and say none. And then down here in the final part of the CSS code that they provide with the slider, you can see here code and nav left A. What that is, is again these arrows and code and nav right A. Well here it has text align center and I don't really see any reason for that to be there in this situation. So I'm also going to get rid of that. And I'm sure you know what that means. And I'm going to put this semicolon in there. Okay. Okay, so now it comes to the part where I'm actually going to start styling things using my own CSS code. So I'm going to give myself some room. All right, so as I look at the left side of the screen at this mess, I'm going to slowly try to put everything together here. Well, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to properly style this left arrow, which is this guy up here. And I'm going to put that in a position where I want it. So I'm going to go Coda, Nav, Left. A. And also what I'm going to do is I'm going to file save this and let's reload it and see what we got. All right, you can see that a lot of things are coming together and looking pretty sharp, so that's cool. All right, so I'm going to move those arrows in there. I know basically where they are. One of the reasons they're not shown on a screen is they're being hidden. Okay, so I want to position this relative. And this is sort of an eyeball thing. From the top, I want to come down 320 pixels. From the left, I want to go over towards the right, 30 pixels. I want to increase my overall font size for that arrow to 200%. And I want to change or set my color to make sure that it's white. And then to make sure that it pops up on the screen and you can see it, I'm going to set my Z index to 100. Reload it. And you can see the arrow is right here. If you can't write in this general vicinity. All right, so now what are we going to do? Basically going to do the same exact thing with the right arrow. So I'm just going to put that in there and I'm going to go right. And again, everything's going to be 320 pixels because I want everything to line itself up. However, from the left, this guy's going to have to change. Since it was on the right side of the screen, I want to move it towards the left. So I get to give it a negative number. And in this situation, I'm going to put 40 pixels in there and see how that lines itself up. And everything else, I can leave exactly the same. Now, another thing that's going on here is that these arrows are actually surrounded by a div. And I want to take those divs and I want to, in essence, kind of get rid of them or make them insignificant. And this is the quick and dirty way of doing this. Now, this is basically what I do whenever somebody comes to me and gives me an idea or a job like create a featured content tool and I need it in three hours. This is kind of the stuff that I do. It's not considered exactly the way to do it, but I am almost always on strict time constraints, so this is the sort of stuff that I end up doing. Left. Okay, so that takes care of the situation with those divs on the screen. Now what do we want to do? Well, let's file save it. 
make sure our arrows went in the right place. Okay, so you can see an arrow there, and then there's an arrow over here. Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a hover effect on these guys also. And if you wanna put a hover effect on something, basically, let's just put that side of there. Then you go colon and you go hover. And then, since I wanna do it for both of them, let's put left in here instead of right, colon, hover. And now I'm just simply gonna change the color of the arrow on the screen whenever a mouse hovers over top of them. So I just type in color, which is a reference to text, and I'm just gonna put 39C because that's used elsewhere inside of this plugin. It's nice. Okay, so now we come into the nav thumbs area. That's these guys right here. I wanna properly position those on the screen. So I'm going to go after the nav thumbs div that surrounds all of my thumbnails on the screen. And I'm gonna define that I want a width of those for 300 pixels. Of course, this is gonna change depending upon the number of thumbnails you have. Height, 60 pixels. Display, I'm gonna use inline block again. And what inline block does is it allows me to set things like the width, the height, the top, the bottom, margins and paddings and all those different things, but it doesn't force a line break like the regular display block would do. So it's all the benefits of block without the negative of block. That's in essence what it is. And then I want to position it relative because it's not in a good position where it is currently. And from the left side of the screen, I want it to come over 230 pixels. And from the top, actually it kind of looks good where it is. I'm just going to put five pixels in there. Reload. And you see it's getting in there pretty good. Let's see what else we can do here. Well, each one of these thumbnails is of the class Xtrig, and that's a class that I was provided by the code of slider, and I just decided to use it because I don't like changing names, especially if they're embedded inside a code. So if I want to move these around here a little bit on the screen, I can do something like a padding right, 10 pixels, and a padding left of 10 pixels. And also what I want to do with these is I want them to have an opacity, kind of be translucent and dimmed by default. That's so that whenever they do get emphasis that they show up better on the screen. And I'm just going to say show them 50%. And then for Internet Explorer, it doesn't have the opacity. So we're going to have to say alpha opacity is equal to 50. And that'll make them all show up grayed out as default, which is good. Now, of course, whenever I have my current thumb, and let's file save this, make sure it's looking good. And it is. It's looking very, very centered. But you can probably not see them because they have opacity filter on them. So what I'm going to do is go current thumb right like that. And current thumb is going to be whatever is featured currently up here in this part of the screen right there. In this situation, if it's current, I'm going to say opacity is equal to one, which is 100%, or filter colon alpha opacity is equal to 100%. Then as these change, everything else is going to change. And as you can see, as it auto slides, Sloan is now highlighted and Sloan is up here. TNS is highlighted and TS is up there. So that's coming together also well. And these guys down here, whenever they change, these where it says panel one, panel two, panel three, panel four. Let's zoom in. As these guys change, they're automatically changing these thumbnails up here. So eventually what I'm gonna wanna do is get rid of them. And why not just get rid of them right now? If you wanna get rid of those so that those panels don't show up there anymore, it's real easy. They were all surrounded by a div called Coda now. And if you don't want them to show up on the screen, it's real simple. You just say display, none. I'll say reload. And you can see they don't show up on the screen anymore. So that's cool. And then I just have to do some basic touch-ups. You see how quickly that came together. What I want to do is do the coda slider and panel wrapper. So I just want to make sure they're padding. Bottom is equal to zero. And this is something I'm kind of doing so that this is more cross-browser because sometimes that little problem sneaks in there. And then if I also want to make sure that the H2 title doesn't show up at all, see there's a black bar up upside here. I can just go h2.title, which is its name, and I can say display none, reload. And you can see that that black line went away. So that's how you get rid of that. And for the most part, I really don't have to change anything else inside of this. I mean, it looks perfect. It does the job. But I am going to do, again, for a cross-browser problem, Chrome is perfect. That's what I'm using here to look at this. But again, there's problems, namely Internet Explorer, that will mess up. If I don't go in here and say arrows, again, this is just a div that wraps around all the arrows. I need to set the width 762 pixels because that's the width that I have defined inside of here. And my padding is equal to zero pixels. And then finally, my page wrapper, which wraps around everything that's there on the screen. Just to be safe, I'm going to float it left, which as you can see, you don't have to do in good browsers, but in bad browsers, you sometimes have to. 
And if I reload it, you can see that everything works absolutely perfect, just the way that we planned before. And if you want to turn this into a light box, I provide a link to a tutorial, or you can just pretty much embed this code right directly inside of that. It's at the top of the screen. And you can turn this into a light box where it works as a gallery. And hopefully, just by watching this tutorial, you know that you can move this up here real easily, or you can move it on the right side of the screen or on the left side of the screen, or make the images bigger or get rid of this bar here and all together and do all kinds of other cool things. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.